these are multiple different types of R4 cards. And I'm going to share how easy the R4 card really is to set up while sharing some tips to help you along the way with your R4 card journey today. On the table are multiple different types of R4 cards. A lot of people overcomplicate the R4 card itself. And I'm here to basically just share with some timestamps in the link in the description below, some tips about how to determine what R4 card you have, what to do when certain things happen, how to basically pick your R4 card, what happens if you get like a specific error, like the question mark menu or DS menu dot data error, helping get an SD card, what SD card to buy, and so on and so forth. I have a huge list here that's going to share some information, and if you wanna just check out the timestamps, go ahead and do so and hit that subscribe button. Also be sure to check out my R4 card playlist because I have an R4 card guide for almost every R4 card out there that's on the table at least, not everyone, I guess. I'm going to probably put R4 card guides again for this one, this one, this one, this one, and even this one because I don't have a guide for this one. But again, this one, I'm going to tell you during this video, some of these R4 cards use the exact same what is called a kernel which is the files that you put on your SD card. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the SD card. I highly recommend you to never buy anything above 32 gigabytes. This is a 32 gigabyte Gigastone SD card and it works great. I've had this one, you can tell that it's been used and worn down for two or three years now and I haven't had a single problem knock on wood. Now, I'm telling you this because a lot of people are like, well, I have a 64 gigabyte one, and that's the only one I have on hand. You can go ahead and use a 64 gigabyte one, so as long as it's an SDHC version, but you need to format it to FAT32 with a 32 kilobyte allocation size. Video linked in the description below on how to do that. Now, the reason why is because not a single one of these R4 cards that you see on the table play 3DS games. People get confused about this logo right here or if it says 3DS on it. None of these cards play them, okay? There is an S or an actual flash card that plays 3DS games and you can go and search that if you want, which is also linked in the description of the video below because I have one. But if you're looking to play just DS games and some emulation, then get yourself a 32 gigabyte SD card. Gigastone is a great brand. I'll link an affiliate link for where you can buy them or make sure that it's not a fake SD card. Some fake SD cards cause problems. Now, a lot of no-name brand SD cards that are 32 gigabytes are usually fine. Now, how do you determine what R4 cards you have? Let's say there's no sticker on these, or maybe you bought an R4 card and you had nothing to go based off of, and you bought this one right here. This is called the real-time save R4 card. It has a save state functionality with the default kernel, it also has a website on the motherboard on the back that says www.r4i-sdhc.com. This is very, very much easily able to be basically pointed out and know which one this is. And it loads a game called Bomberman. Now I'm going to load up my DSi because yes, this R4 card works in a DSi, it works in a DS, DS Lite, it works in everything. That's basically what this means on the bottom where it says the, the console names. So if I plug this into the back, it loads up a game called Bomberman. That is one big way to actually know what R4 card you have. Now, if I take this SD card, which is blank by the way, it has nothing on it. It's a fully formatted SD card and I pop it into my DSi. This one loads another game called Deep Labyrinth. Now, there's two cards that do the same thing. Well, there's a couple cards that do the same thing. These two cards, they both have different stickers, but they're both smart update R4 cards that load Deep Labyrinth and what is called the Wood Kernel. Some people get these two cards very much confused with each other, especially now the 2025 model says Revolutions 4, which is very confusing, but it still says smart update on the bottom. Whereas this one, it just says 
Revolutions 4, and it also has a different motherboard. As you can see, the motherboards are different, and this one doesn't have a website. But one big way to actually test is to take a blank SD card, doesn't have to have anything on it, make sure it's seated, and check out what the game loads. Now I'm going to do that with this one. This one's a completely different one as well. Some people ask me, what about the gold one? Well, sometimes the card actually doesn't read either because of the pins, but that'll be for another section. This one's loading Star Wars Lethal Alliance. What does that mean? Well, that means that you need a completely different set of files as well to put on the SD card. And I'm going to go through and check out another one. This one's the one that a lot of people say, hey, buy this one because it works great and it never has any issues, but it also is one of the ones that you can use to actually, it's an old method that people used to use to hack their 3DS consoles. This one loads SpongeBob Atlantis Pants. Now there's some other cards that load SpongeBob Atlantis Pants, like the Smart Update card from I think 2016 and below, and they load a different kernel as well, which is kind of confusing for some people. Now, this smart update card, this smart update card, which is up here, by the way, and this card can use the same kernel. Now this one, if we pop it in, if it wants to load, again, sometimes the contact pins are dirty or the SD card won't read. There we go. This one also loads SpongeBob. I know it loaded and then it didn't load. Sometimes that happens and that's because, yeah, the contact pins or anything are not working properly. As you can see, it's like flickering back and forth and that's because there's something wrong with this R4 card, but it also says real-time save. This is not a real, real-time save R4 card. It uses a completely different kernel as well. Now, there's some R4 cards that are only specific for the DS and the DS Lite. This is a, well, I think it is a real Truth Inquirer sticker on the back, by the way, um, R4 for Revolutions and these ones, some say they work for 3DS, some say they work for DSi, and some say they only work for DS and DS Lite, which is very important. Ignore the Wi-Fi sticker, because there's some that don't have a Wi-Fi sticker on them, and they still just use the same kernel. Now, this one also loads Bomberman. You can use the same kernel from this one, and as you can see here, it doesn't load on a DSi because it's not compatible with the DSi. But... If you plug it into a DS Lite or a DS, which is this one right here, then it should boot the actual game if it wants to read it. Let's try it one more time. And there we go. That error is completely different as well. And that's because that SD card has nothing on it. So that means that this DS Lite is actually trying to read the R4 card, but because there's no files on it and that exactly that R4 card itself tries to auto boot no matter if you try to turn off the auto boot or not as you can see the manual mode is turned on and that's because of the actual file system itself so it's kind of hard to determine whether or not you have this R4 card only if you don't know how to fix that question mark menu error which is also something I'm going to explain today so this R4 card only works in a DS or a DS Lite because it says that on the front now this one this one works for all consoles I guess I have an SD card in there see it's SanDisk 32 gigabyte works fine this one works for every console now again making sure that your SD card is seated in there properly and you have your contact pins you can even wipe it with your shirt it doesn't matter isopropyl alcohol obviously is the best way also loads Bomberman same with this one you can use this kernel on this card and on this card only. The real-time save, real real-time save R4 cards. Not these fake ones. These are fake real-time save R4 cards, and they only load the different kernels that I was explaining. Now for the final R4 card that came out just recently, like last year or whatever it was, is the Easy Flash failed attempt at an R4 card. I say it's a failed attempt because Easy Flash has still not updated it and I have no idea what this game is. Some Chinese game that loads a couple kids on the screen and if somebody wants to tell me what the game name is, then great. However, this R4 card again uses its own kernel from their website or you can try to use Twilight Menu. Twilight Menu has been trying to fix things with Twilight Menu for this R4 card because it's a great R4 card, 30 bucks though Canadian, and it has better components inside because it uses FGP, FGG, I can't even think of the name of that right now, but it's a certain chip that is better for actual compatibility and performance and stuff like that, and 
it should last you forever. Now, people ask me about the bomb of the time bomb. Now, some people ask me about the bomb of the timer bomb, the bomb of the timer bomb, the timer bomb, or this card specifically. The timer bomb was, or the time bomb, whatever you want to call it, was basically gotten rid of a couple of years ago with a custom kernel that somebody put together. I have a video that shows you how to put the SD card inside this and use the kernel and it just works. Now, Twilight Menu also gets rid of that. YS Menu also gets rid of that. So the bomb of the timer bomb, time bomb. I don't even know why I keep calling it that. It does not exist anymore, technically. Now that goes to say some older cards, like say if you sat, found one under your couch or something from 20 years ago, might not even work at all because if you use the wrong kernel or if you used this card years ago and then the time bomb went off, it might not work anymore. There's some cards that actually made it so that you can't use it anymore. Another big thing that happens is that people get this menu error. Now this menu error is different for every card. This is the real-time save R4 card. This error pops up when you put a blank SD card in it and you try to load the game. The question mark menu error. This means multiple things. A, you put the files in the wrong folder on the SD card. B, you put the wrong files on the SD card for a different card. C, you didn't format the SD card and you didn't format it properly and you put the files on and it's not reading because you didn't put it in there properly. And another way is because the files that you put on here, again, don't work because it's not reading the actual SD card. Now, if we put this one in and we plug it in, hopefully it reads SpongeBob Atlantis pants, it'll say an error has occurred, press the power button to turn off the system. This is a different error that happens on different devices. And if I plug it into my DS Lite, it'll try to boot into a white screen. That's because it also has the auto boot function, even if you turn off that auto boot function, just like this card did, not this one, this one right here. White screen means that you put the files on that weren't for that card specifically. Now this one, which is the DS only, DS Lite only R4 card, does the menu screen. So this one, again, same concept because it loads Bomberman, is looking for that kernel on the actual SD card, which is not there. This one, which is a smart update R4 card, these two do exactly the same thing. So I'm just gonna use this one as reference. Shows up with Deep Labyrinth. And if I press A to play, it'll say can't open DS menu dot dat. That's because it's looking for that DS menu dot dat file and it's not existent. So it means it's not on the SD card or you did basically everything else like I said in the very first part where I told you what the issues could be. Now this one is the ACE 3DS X card. I'm gonna plug this one in. I actually don't even know what air is going to pop up for this one, I don't remember. SpongeBob Atlantis pants, same thing, can't find DS menu dot dat, so underscore DS menu dot dat, and that means that it's looking for that underscore DS menu dot dat file again. Now for the Star Wars one, this one is another one that I actually don't even really know. So we're going to test this again. Basically, the gist of this is that it's looking for a file that does not exist on the SD card because you either didn't put it on right, you had the wrong file, you basically didn't follow the video. This one has a completely different question mark menu error. So that means that it's looking for the Star Wars uh, kernel and it's not existent on the card. Now, there's also another error that's going to pop up if I use a big SD card that's not properly formatted. So I'm going to grab the Smart Update R4 card right here. I'm going to plug it in, then press A to play, and it's going to give me the SDTF card error. What that means is that I didn't format this SD card properly, and also I don't have any files on the SD card. I just basically formatted this to XFAT, and that error just basically means that, hey, you didn't format this properly. So if I formatted it properly and put the right SD card or the right files on the SD card, then it will work. I promise you that it does. I've already tested it multiple times. Now, the last thing that I'm going to basically explain here is something that I experienced throughout this video, if you didn't watch the whole thing. I had an issue where sometimes the R4 card, and I think it was this one that kept bugging out, just would not read my SD card or it wouldn't read the actual actual R4 card. I'm gonna test it out with this one because I can just plug it in and plug it out. So it is reading it now, but it was bugging out and not reading it. So let me see if I take the SD card out a little bit. Yeah, it still wants to read it. What if I take the SD card out completely? Still reads that one. 
And usually the R4 card, there's my face, um, doesn't read on devices if it doesn't have an SD card in it, but I think this one might be an exception. But here we go. Yeah, see how it just bugged out for a second? And that's because sometimes you get a little bit of dirt on the contact pins or your thing is so old, your device. Let me turn this one on and see if it does it. We had it happen earlier in the video where it wasn't reading unless I cleaned it off. And this one wants to auto boot, remember? So that one tries to auto boot into the R4 card. But again, if you ever have that issue where it's not reading, just get some isopropyl alcohol, rub it on the contact pins, even try to rub it on your actual contact pins of the SD card itself. And then when you're putting it in, Make sure it feels like you're actually shoving it in there nicely and you push it in so nicely, it'll feel like it's nice and tight. Sometimes the contact pins, which are very, very small on the inside here, you sometimes seat it in there and it might not seat properly in the actual contact pins themselves. And basically the card might not be readable. Now it's obviously trying to read now. I don't know if I have another card that's, um, I guess this is another tip too, is that this card right here, because it doesn't work for the DSi, just shows up with a blank menu. One big thing is just to test out a game. Your normal DS games, test it out, see if it fits and works inside your DS. This game has some problems too, and I think it might be even this DSi actually that's having the issues, but yeah, see, that could even be the case too. The DSi, you could take some air, like a little air gun or something, like this or even some dust off try to dust in there and stuff don't put any isopropyl alcohol down there unless you take the thing apart and clean it properly but the contact pins these devices are getting so old like this one i still have to reshell this one i just keep it like this for nostalgia i don't know this is a broken hinge and i keep it like this because this is one of my very first uh ds that i bought like a couple years back like five years ago not my first one ever i had a ds way back in the day but i bought that one and then i've been you know reshelling these and everything and i resell them too so i reshell them with like easy flat or extreme right shells and then resell them after the fact with an r4 card usually but yeah um the thing is the r4 card the gist of this video does have some issues but if you load the proper kernel on the sd card you follow the guide properly you pay attention to the introduction of the video where i say hey if your r4 card looks like this says this and loads this game this guide is for you i've been trying to be better at sharing that in those videos and i'll link all my playlist and everything in the description of this video so that you can basically just take your r4 card grab the proper files Format the SD card properly, 32 gigabytes you can format on your PC. Find the R4 card that you want to actually set up, which is the smart update card, which is this video right here. Grab the link that I've supplied you with to basically help you out. Properly extract all the files. Navigate inside the folder. Once all the files are actually fully extracted, I forgot to wait. Grab all these files, right click, copy, paste them on your SD card. Navigate into the nds folder for example paste your game in there that you own by the way there's my owned game that i dumped with my hacked dsi plug it into your smart update r4 card making sure that everything is seated and your contact pins are cleaned off and put it in whatever device you want press a to play boot into the menu go into your games folder press a to play again and be on your way to enjoy your r4 card on whatever device it's compatible for. Again, don't forget the tip about some R4 cards only work for DS and DS Lite. Have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed this well put together video and subscribe to the channel and share this with anybody else that needed to know some tips about why, when, where, and how. I also put links in the description for affiliate links for where to buy your R4 card. If they change, I'm sorry. AliExpress sometimes is weird with that, but there are some on Amazon. Bye.